Hello, and welcome back to Amari. So we're done with Black Space for now. So we're back in Sunny's room where Hero seems to be missing. How strange. Where did Hero go? Uh, he was banned. RNG is not fun in a video game, so we're, we're banning him. He's actually not banned. He's actually pretty mid-tier. That's that. That's the joke, because yeah. people are like, wow, RNG ruined Smash Brothers. And it's like, really? Wow. Isn't that the case, though, with every DLC character release? Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. New character broken? Yeah. Not clickbait? Oh, my God. I remember everyone in their grandma. I think, like, the worst one out of all of them was Min Min. Yeah. Because everyone was so convinced that the game was over because Minwin was so busted. And then an hour passes <laughs> and people actually get to play the character. It is like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? It's almost as if, you know, you, you, it takes a little bit to learn how to play against a new character that you haven't seen before. I'm, I'm aghast. And then there's Steve. Fuck Steve. It's yeah, not even dude, talking about the Minecraft sleeping. character. He's just talking about a guy he knows named Steve. Buddy, we're trying to sleep here. Uh oh. Oh, I know it's a ghost. It's a ghost piano. Never mind. <laughs> it's not even Mario. It's a ghost. The piano itself is the specter. The evil piano from Mario 64. So, what they're doing here is something that I constantly battle with on how I feel regarding silent characters in um, in RPGs like this is how much the game like gives personality to the silent character um, and there's, a, there's a numerous examples of this where the silent protagonist, because the silent protagonist is typically made that way because you're supposed to be role-playing as the character. Um, yeah. With that said, there are a number of games there where, you know, they will then say, oh, well, silent protagonist has such and such traits. And you will often hear like characters in the game say that about them. Like in this case in here, it was like Mario was like, oh, you would play the violin and have such and such feelings about blah, blah, blah. Um, in this, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I always go back and forth and it's such a case by case basis on how I feel about the concept in general. Yeah, it does. It does kind of like depend on the uh, execution of it. One of the uh, examples that comes to my mind is the way the Persona series handles it, where the characters are only actually silent so long as you are in control of them. Kind of like uh, Lucas and Mother 3, actually. So, like, between the two Persona 2 games, you actually do get to see both of the two protagonists in a speaking role from from the outside. And you get an, you get an idea of what they're like from that. Mother 3 also does that uh, with Lucas uh, in the earlier parts of the game before you assume direct control of the kid. Uh, once you assume control of Lucas, Lucas clams up for the rest of the game. Yeah, and uh, the other formerly silent protagonists speak except presumably the monkey because it's a monkey <laughs> <laughs> that's right <racist, though. laughs> uh, but yeah it's like in some so this is why i'm torn on it because in some instances like that's something about mother three's story um i've never jived as much with um context warning i've never played mother three for myself um, I've played Earthbound, um, not a huge fan of Earthbound, never played Mother 3, I, but I've seen the story, so, like, I've seen playthroughs and read about it, so, like, I know what happens. Um, I'm really torn because when we know a character can speak, and then we stop seeing their perspective, especially considering the emotional moments that happen later in the game, it's like, I want to know what Lucas is thinking, um... And you don't get to see that. The uh, concept, the idea, is that you can use the information that you have to imaginate what they're thinking and feeling. Which in some regards, not all of them, but some of them, uh, is more interesting. 
That is true, and that's 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 why I'm so torn about it. Because another game that does something similar is Dragon Quest V, where you're silent the entire time, and then I guess minor spoiler alert: there's some time travel shenanigans, and you briefly end up talking to your past self, and you get to see their dialogue. And that's like a really interesting thing because then you wonder, well, what did your character have to say about, you know, the seven or eight different tear dropping gut punching scenes earlier in the game? Uh, and it's like, I don't know. It's that's why I'm, I'm so torn on it in that. Well, it sounds like it all depend in your case, it all de depends on the context. Yeah, yeah, but that's not a good answer. It's like, oh, it depends on the situation is the lamest answer to any question. I mean, but it's true, time. though. Yeah, I mean, but it sucks. I, it's not an answer you may not like hearing, but it is, How it is am I ultimately supposed to be the answer. satisfied with my with my my state my state of being if I have to constantly uh, critically evaluate every piece of media I consume on an individual basis. That sounds like way too much work. <laughs> I, I think can't. in my case, so not counting this game, I think in my case, if you're going to have a pro this this a protagonist be silent in an RPG specifically, not saying it can't work, but my hopes is that I hope they're not the main character. <laughs> like I hope they're not the central protagonist. Well. That even that is a case by case thing. Like, yeah, I, Persona Five, you know, the little niche indie game in the corner that no one ever mentions, um, does a really good job with its silent protagonist because it surrounds that silent protagonist with a lot of things that make you think about what's going on in their head yourself. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a it's kind of a strong role play experience in a different way than something like. Um, Baldur's Gate or Elder Scrolls or whatever in the sense that you're not creating a role and playing that you are looking at the role that has been created and you are playing within that framework so you get a strong sense of what the character's personality is through both their actions their circumstances and well, I say both but it's three things the third thing being the dialogue choices they actually give you which actually have a lot of attitude to them um, yeah, I was I was gonna bring that up because that's a big thing in not just Persona but all of the different Shin, Shin Megami Tensei spinoffs. Like, if you look at the uh, Persona is a, a really easy example where if you look at the Persona Three protagonist's uh, dialogue choices, he's such a dick. He's like the <laughs> he most is. squall Lionheart, whatever. <laughs> dot dot dot. I don't care. Kind of dipshit and then you look at um the persona 4 protagonist and he's just happy to be here he's he's um, he's a pun meister <laughs> especially yeah. in golden he, he there's a cleaning scene and he has a dialogue choice where he declares himself the clean lantern um <laughs> <laughs> there's a devil survivor where the main character you can pretty easily like um deduce that they're not actually paying t attention to anything that's going on because they're always, like, asking questions, like, that are really stupid. And then your party members will be like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> um, um, it's actually, it, sadly, it's the mainline games where the characters feel more personality-less. Like, the, um, like, four and five uh, pro tags don't really have that same kind of spark that the spinoffs tend to. Yeah. And I remember Nocturne, the choices were all about, like just edging you toward the various endings. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I have thoughts on Nocturne's story that I won't get into. Cause that's a, that's a rant and a half. Uh, how <laughs> the hell did we, um, get into Aub Aubrey's room? Just to the door try was to unlocked. Be, it was, yeah, there was unlocked. Okay. Cause uh, Aubrey's parents they don't exactly give a fuck about anything. If you, uh, if, if the derelict house wasn't a dead giveaway. Also, I think Aubrey sleeps with a natural sunroof at all times. Because there is this dead ass a hole in her ceiling. I like her SpaceX boyfriend poster. There's not just a hole in her ceiling. There's also cracks in her walls and little yeah. blemishes on the floor. There's a bucket in the corner for catching leaks. It's There's a hole behind the uh, bedside table over there um, next to the television. 
Yeah. That's... Wait, you got to put the desk somewhere when you're not using it. Yeah. I like how the poster on our wall has a bent corner. I can tell you exactly how that got there. So she didn't have a leveler when hanging up this poster. Hangs it up, confident that she got it right the first try, then takes a few steps back. And it's, Fuck, crooked. it's crooked. Yeah. Oh, and then when you try to take the tape off, you do it too far. You rip a little bit of the, mm -hmm. the ink off the... Yeah. Every single time. Wait a minute. Hold on. Aubrey has a bunny. What the fuck did that bunny do to Sonny? Uh, considering how every bunny we see in the dream world is his mortal enemy. What the, what the fuck did well, that remember, bunny do? Remember, Sonny just needs to pull stuff from the real world. The context doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I think the context definitely does matter. Because otherwise, Basil wouldn't be a nightmare demon every time we saw him. <laughs> uh, that's got a very specific real world context attached to it. That makes absolute total sense once you have it. But anyway, important uh, important context clue though we got uh, earlier in this part is that we do know at least where the name Amori likely stems from. Uh, where is uh, that? It's, it's from the piano, uh, because if you examine the piano. After you have a little Mari cutscene, uh, they will state that the word Amori is etched on the front of the piano. Oh, so it's like the brand of piano. That... Yes. That's in an interesting way to get your, your screen name. Uh, sure. I mean, it, at the very least, it highlights that the piano is means something very important to yeah, Sonny. For sure. Do they go into detail about Mari's relationship specifically with Aubrey? Because clearly Aubrey's broken up about how she died, but... Um, yeah. And I mean, granted, since the game's from Sunny's perspective, is her relationship with, with him is probably uh, the most developed. I'm not but. sure they would really need to, to go into anyone's specific relationship with Mari for it to not come off as just this absolute perfect storm of tragedy that messes everyone involved up, to be honest. I think, like, you get you get everyone's feelings, you get everyone else's feelings towards Mario or the, where they stood in the relationship with her throughout the game. Uh, as long as you keep up with the dialogue. It, it's something that you don't really pick up in the commentary setting. That's fair, yeah, because I, I can definitely tell you I have not been able to read every dialogue super critically because yeah. like oh. we'll be you know. getting we'll be getting to the to the heart of the matter this part this session so we're, we're, we're actually seeing it in action here though ted oh yeah because like, i'm assuming seeing the significance of, the... of yeah you can you can you, so these are the missing photos when we first got the photo album like we got it from aubrey or at least aubrey threw away the photo album we picked it up from the trash but some photos were missing all the ones involving mari yeah, all the photos involving Mari were in Aubrey's possession. So now we have all the Mari photos, and you can read these, yeah, and, and you get a better been, understanding of how relationships with the other friends were for this. Yeah, this and you character. definitely see that there's been multiple photos with everybody. Um, I like how Aubrey even went to the trouble of of stealing the photo that 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 presumably only has Mari's hand in it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Very meticulous. How did she even know that was Mari? <laughs> okay, so hmm. How many parts do we have left until we get to the big choice to the to the big like reveal? Well, let's see. I mean, we're getting really close to like the I want to say the turning point, but like the big climax. Yeah. Or at least where things just start going in a very steep downward spiral. Yeah. And honestly, I can't wait because I'm tired of beating around the bush. <laughs> <laughs> Is there some implication that Hero and Mari like were? No, it's not implication. It's already stated. They were. They were. They were a couple for a bit. Okay. Yeah, they're holding hands on that one. See. What illegal. I can't believe it. Before marriage, hand holding. How lewd. <laughs> Jail. So, did Basil write all the notes too? Yes, he did. Yes. Okay. 
All these photos were taken from uh, Basil. Okay. Can you read the notes before you put the p pictures in, or no? No, you cannot. Okay. The game all the game just straight up tells you where to put the photos, though, so you never have to worry about like putting the photos in incorrect order. You can only put it in the incorrect order. Um, in the correct order, I mean. Yeah. Does make it a bit of a time waster, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's just the significance. I'm the, like, you know, it's 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 a slow. Build. I'm the kind of I'm the kind of I'm the kind of person who actually likes opening individual drawers in Shenmue. So what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mari got the giant stag. So you got to hear the Animal Crossing. Took her like eighty six attempts because she forgot to walk. Managed to hold it in her hand without getting bit. That's impressive. Oh, it's actually called Space Boyfriend. Wow. Wait, what? The 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 Space Boyfriend is actually called Space Boyfriend in the real world. Oh. <laughs> Some wacky manga. Uh, it looks like it. Hmm. They really, really want you to be on the same wavelength as the characters regarding Mari. And, you In know, that. yeah, and, you know, that's like I'm I, I I knew the twist going in, but it's making the twist feel heavier in my brain. Well, at this point, <laughs> if you've been reading the dialogue, you already know at least partially the cause of Mari's death. We don't have the full context for it. I mean, I've got yeah. a I've got a pretty solid idea so what do you what, happened. what do you think what what, what, do, what do you think what happened basil basil somehow got her knocked into the pond and she drowned is my guess of what happened all right so if you read hero's dialogue earlier during that piano scene uh he specifically states i have no idea why mari chose the way to go why she chose to leave us the way she did oh oh shit oh oh okay then i was Hmm. Reading that the first time, like, <laughs> like, cause you have an inkling of like things like how things played out just by like, again, context clues, reading between the lines and hitting X on every little thing. <laughs> like you're playing shed move <laughs> or some other thing like that. No, uh, you see, if we were playing Shenmue, we'd be uh, we'd be pestering every other NPC, asking them the same question over and over. Where is, is Basil's photo the, album? Uh, album. Where can I get a job? <laughs> is that um, Aubrey's dad on the couch? Uh, Aubrey's mom. Does she say anything if you try to talk to her? No. Nope. Doesn't even realize you're there. That's some like legitimate child neglect going on which is very depressing i didn't get a good look at this house um the last time we were here but jesus it's just as busted up on the outside aubrey's family is pretty neglectful on every level jesus i mean two road cones definitely poverty and a stop sign i say i wish well i, I mean sign. look look around the back of the house they just have a bunch of loose trash bags and a bunch of bananas for some reason okay well to be fair the loose trash bag could be just because they missed trash day and you know like, three uh, times already outside <laughs> yeah three times <laughs> come on well they could have a lot of garbage i mean you saw the inside of the house well i mean the only how the only other house that i that i see with like a trash bag on the outside is that one with the red truck over there you know the the house where mew is hiding apparently um and they've got like <laughs> tires out no, there. No, that truck's too. facing the wrong direction. But like, you just don't leave trash bags outside like that. Um, if there's any chance that there's something in there an animal would want, you know? Yeah, yeah worry about squirrels and raccoons specifically. So, fun, fun fact um, I believe it was a community in California. Um, I could be misremembering where it was, but um, there were bears that lived in the woods. And fun fact, bears are very smart and know that people have food. 
and they put food in those like very very convenient you know metal tins you know and you go into the metal tins and there's just food inside isn't that great um so you know the i believe it was the government um it might have been a private you know team they were like okay we want everybody to uh, we're gonna make these these bit these like lock boxes where you can lock your trash in so that fucking bears don't come into your neighborhood trying to eat your garbage and people don't get killed by a fucking bear um, and guess what? People wouldn't do it because the, 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 the little boxes were too ugly. Oh man. They, they're so, they're such an eyesore, man. You know, can't have like, dirty garbage. Yeah. It's like, so, well, if your eyes are a problem, just give the bears a couple of seconds. And so the, the point is, quick. is that laziness and people will come up with literally any reason to not have to put even the slightest bit of extra work in uh getting rid of their garbage uh <laughs> it's just something nobody wants to do uh even yeah. if the consequence is oh the fucking bear attacks every weekend sure yeah some people just don't learn the lesson unless they learn it the hard way and that's a shame yeah because uh guess what if you um run into a bear you're probably like you're not walking away in one piece, probably. Depends on the type of bear, really. Some are actually afraid of humans. Well, a lot of them are afraid of humans, but that's why you don't want to mess with them because uh, they have a flight or fight instant instinct too, and they will. There is a chance that they will come at you if they think that you're a threat. Man, touching scene at Mari's grave, and here we are talking about bears eating garbage in California. <laughs> well, that's because I mean, you can do you can do two things at once. It's called multitask. Listen, the bears might be coming out of the woods at any point. Like we we saw how bears are in this game. That is true. They oh, were very a, angry. There was, there was a dungeon full of bears. Do you want to have a picnic with Mari? Oh, sweet. We got to save our game. Nice. <laughs> Where'd we all get all this picnic basket hey, stuff? Not for nothing. Isn't this a little, a little inappropriate? <laughs> Aubrey looks a little... Aubrey looks annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just where the part ends. So this is... I mean, this is something that people do do at, like, uh, graveyards and stuff. I think, like, you know, the big happy blanket is maybe a bit much but you know it's this isn't <laughs> this isn't an, an unheard of thing to happen i would say 